welcome back uh, in the last lecture uh, we just presented uh, one axiomatic system we just introduced what we mean by an axiomatic system and uh, what what should an axiomatic system should consist of so these are the things which we have discussed in the last class today I will be presenting uh, an axiomatic uh, system uh, in the propositional logic that is due to Bretton Russell and Whitehead so we will be taking into consideration a, a portion of uh, the famous book Principia Mathematica where Bretton Russell and Whitehead talked about uh, deduction so we will be focusing our attention on that particular portion of that book and then we will be trying to present his axiomatic system in, uh, in, uh, in the best possible manner. So any axiomatic system should have these thing, three things at least so it should have to begin with it should have some axioms which does not require any proofs so they are like self evident truths etc and then these axioms um, I mean uh, if you use some kind of uh, substitution rules and transformation rules this axioms transforms into another kind of uh, uh, statement which, which you call it as uh, theorems so what we have are uh, first to start with axioms and then these axioms are changes, changing into theorems with the help of transformation rules etc and then only one rule that we will be employing here that is the modus ponens rule which is also called as rule of detachment from alpha and alpha in plus beta you can obtain beta. So now you will clearly see here uh, what we are essentially using is uh, as many few rules as possible and you should note that these rules are truth preserving kind of rules and axioms are obviously true statements which are obviously ab absolutely true and whatever you substitute in that one uniformly then that axiom will generate a particular kind of theorem and then we will be applying uh, uh, the modus ponens rule which is also considered to be a truth preserving kind of rule so it will generate you will generate only theorems so that means uh, what essentially we are trying to do is, is that in a given formal language uh, let us say L we are trying to find out proofs for all the valid formulas so now you know that some formulas are valid maybe just by means of some truth table method etc and all so now we are trying to generate proofs of these formulas by means of a particular kind of syntactic method which is called as axiomatic uh, propositional logic so now uh, Russell and Whitehead in their uh, in his famous book Principia Mathematica he has presented this particular kind of uh, axiomatic system uh, so this grand project is called as constructivist project his focus is on arithmetic uh, was an arithmetic so he sued to show uh, a principia mathematica sued to show that all of arithmetic can be reduced to logic so uh, this is uh, famously uh, uh, popularly known as uh, logicism so what is logicism it is a thesis that mathematical concepts you take any concepts in arithmetic so we will be focusing our attention on arithmetic the same things can be extended to even geometry also so it is a thesis that mathematical concepts are definable in terms of logical concepts all the mathematical concepts will find some kind of notation in the logic and also that mathematical truths are reducible to logical truths and mathematical modes of inference are also reduced to logical modes of inference and mathematical knowledge is in that sense essentially a logical knowledge so if you can reduce mathematics to logic that is the main thesis statement of logicism mathematics can be reduced to logic then in that sense mathematics will serve as a branch of logic so there are other kinds of constructivist uh, constructivist axiomatic systems which you will find in the literature of history of logic so they are due to to initially to start with we have Gottlob Frege's axiomatic system and David Hilbert and Paul Bernays and Pianos arithmetic etc all these are examples of constructivist camp and they belong to a particular kind of program called as either logicism or formalism so now all of mathematics if we can uh, can be developed through appropriate definitions in the system of logic as defined in the principia principia the, uh, the main thing which uh, which you will find it is is that essentially the project is all about reducing arithmetic to logic 
so that means uh, all the statements of uh, arithmetic etc will find some kind of uh, corresponding uh, uh, translation in the language of logic so arithmetic analysis set theory are all the branches of mathematics will now become part of pure logic so now we'll be we will not be focusing on entire book of principia mathematica but we will be focusing our attention on part one of the book where he mentions about Russell and Whitehead mentions about theory of deduction so Russell and Whitehead axiomatic system is like this he presented an axiomatic system of propositional logic with only two variables so that means two logical constants so different logical systems have different kind of they use different kind of symbols for example in the case of Russell and Whitehead the only primitive symbols that you will find the logical symbols that you will find are disjunction and negation but in the axioms that I am going to mention in a while from now you will find mostly this particular kind of symbol so this stands for according to Russell it stands for material implication since it is easy to write in terms of implication so it is better to it is easy to use material implication so now that particular kind of material implication Russell and Whitehead uses this particular kind of horseshoe I am using this particular kind of symbol so this by definition is same as not A or B so not A or B means A implies B only so how did he come to this particular kind of definition he was looking for a solution for this particular kind of thing when 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 can we say that A materially implies B so what kind of substitution one needs to make here so that we can move from A and then some more statement to B in that sense uh, he is of the view that B can be deduced from A so now uh, he was uh, looking for he was experimenting on various kinds of uh, things here substituting it uh, in place of the missing thing here missing blank here so when you substitute this particular kind of thing there is a possibility of moving from A to B it is in this sense A materially implies B so that is the reason why this particular thing not A or B has served as definition so this can be written using De Morgan's laws as this thing it is not the case that A and not B so this is same as this one. so now in the Russell Whitehead axiomatic system you will find only disjunction and the negation so they are the minimal kind of logical constants that you will find it in the Russell Whitehead axiomatic system another choice could be simply implication and negation this is what where you will find it in the next axiomatic system that you will be talking about we will be talking about which is due to another great mathematician Hilbert and Ackermann he makes use of these two logical symbols in his axiomatic system whereas Russell's choice was this thing this junction and negation but mostly you will find this axioms in this form implication uh, form because it is easy for us to write it and all so but actual translation should be in the form of disjunction you will find you should find only disjunction and negation and that is it in all the axioms so he presented an axiomatization of propositional logic with only disjunction and negation as primitive logical operators a symbolic logic according to him consists of all these three things but we will not be focusing our attention on all these things first is the calculus of proposition calculus of proposition in the sense that when one proposition changes to another one let us say p in plus q in plus p if you substitute something into it it will change to another statement so it is in that sense change of propositions is nothing but the calculus of propositions and the other one is about calculus of classes something related to set theory and the other one is the calculus of relations but we will be focusing our attention on calculus of relation calculus of propositions basically we will be talking about a particular kind of method which is called as deduction what we will be deducing we will be deducing some theorems based on the axioms that were presented by Russell and Whitehead 
So what, what essentially we are trying to talk about is simply like this to start with you have four or five axioms and then you have some kind of transformation rules and you have more exponents and now you can deduce whatever you think is a truth in the arithmetic can be deduced by using the logical notations you can deduce the truths of all these things that means you know deducing the truth means you are proving that particular kind of obviously valid statements valid truths that exist in your formal logical system. So now uh, according to Russell uh, the propositional calculus is characterized by the fact that all these propositions have as hypothesis and as consequent the assertion of material implication. So what is central to Russell and Whitehead axiomatic system is this particular kind of material implication. So A materially implies B for Russell and Whitehead is like this it is not the case at A or B is the case. So this is the way he came up with this particular kind of thing A materially implies B only when you can make this particular kind of substitution of course this substitution is same as this one it is not the case at A and not B. So what is central to Russell Whitehead axiomatic system is the material implication if this is missing then there is no way in which you can move from one proposition to another one. So one the one in, in your uh, proof each step is considered to be uh, a part of the proof and all you cannot move from one step to another step without uh, invoking this particular kind of uh, uh, concept that is the material implication. So now uh, it is in that sense all of its propositions have, its, uh, have as hypothesis and is consequent consequent means the next step that follows from that particular kind of uh, proposition is considered to be an assertion of some kind of uh, applying material implication. So the definition of that one is uh, that, that what you will see on the blackboard. So uh, when you see the original work of uh, Betton Russell and Whitehead book Principia Mathematica which has three volumes the notation would be very difficult to follow uh, but we, will, we are using a different kind of notation but it is more or less uh, we are conveying the same kind of information but anyone who is interested in the actual notation and all they should look into uh, Principia Mathematica but just for the sake of our understanding I am mentioning the notation that is used by but Russell and Whitehead in his uh, path breaking book the Principia Mathematica. Usually you will find uh, some of these symbols and all but you might find some more symbols but uh, at this moment we will be restricting our attention on propositional logic axiomatic propositional logic so that is why you do not see any quantifiers etc. Now. So now the first one is that uh, when he mentions star it indicates uh, some kind of number or sometimes it is, it is also used as some kind of chapter for example if you say star 1 it is some theorem in uh, chapter 1 if it says 20 then it is in chapter 20 and then some theorem followed by that thing. We are using uh, this particular kind of thing V dash but Russell and Whitehead uses a particular kind of symbol uh, which is called as assertion sign. So in the modern notation we will be using uh, this particular kind of uh, symbol in the modern notation it is most convenient so we use use this particular kind of symbol this means suppose if two uh, variables are there on both sides this means uh, y is deduced from x. So Russell and Whitehead in this uh, book they use this particular kind of symbol colon. So this stands for asserting some kind of a proposition this, this is also called an assertion sign obtained by employing the usage of material implication. So that particular thing anything which follows after this assertion sign it, it needs it has to be either simply an axiom or it can be a primitive proposition with whose truth, truth cannot be questioned and all so they are obviously or absolutely true which is denoted as PP or it should be a theorem so that means an axiom if it is an axiom you do not have to have any proof if it is a primitive kind of proposition the already true proposition like 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 it also does not require any proof or it can be some kind of theorem and all which is always true. So in Principia Mathematica uses DF stands for definition 
and then these are the symbols that you will you will see in that book uh, full stop colon semicolon and there are uh, two colons uh, follow uh, each follows each other each and uh, follows so that is used for some kind of punctuation so in the contemporary modern logic textbooks uh, this stands for single uh, colon stands for brackets or sometimes uh, some other symbol uh, two colons follows uh, each other may stand for square brackets etc and all so usually they convey some kind of punctuation marks so for example punctuation marks are uh, very important in the sense in the last few classes we have seen that for example if you have p r q and r so what do you mean by saying that uh, it is is it p r q or r there may be some confusion which arises in our mind whether it should be read as p r q and r or whether it should be read as q and r so now in that sense we come out of this particular kind of ambiguity in this way that we give some kind of reference to uh, this particular kind of uh, logical constants so first you will give reference to and and then or this is negation and then implies and then if and only if so in this sense suppose if there is no bracket which is uh, given and all then this means you need to use some kind of convention or other from this first you need to bracket uh, this thing because conjunction needs to be given first reference and then followed by that the whole thing so now this this is what we mean by this thing, p r q and r so uh, now you can uh, you can eliminate this bracket you can still say this thing without uh, loss of generality we can even remove the outer bracket also so this is what we mean by this one so it is in that sense uh, russell whitehead uses this particular kind of symbols colon sometimes he uses uh, two colons or these four dots and all followed by this thing now it stands for left bracket or if it if you find both the things maybe it is like closing by a bracket and all so it is it helps us in reading the formulas and all since we are not doing um, the way uh, principia uh, the way you find it in principia mathematica but we have slightly changed our proofs and all which fits uh, in our uh, our uh, convenience so which with our convenience so now as usual p q s r etc are propositional variables in any formal language is one of the same there are uh, infinitely many number of such kind of variables if p q s are alphabets are exhaust you can use p 1 p 2 p 3 etc so now there are some other individual variables such as x y z etc so they all represent uh, propositional variables represent some kind of propositions individual variables may represent some kind of individual names etc so this is the axiomatic system due to uh, russell and whitehead in their uh, this is also called as pm this is principia mathematica so we have to call with some name and all so we are calling it as pm so is uh, principia mathematica consist of uh, first first of all propositional variables like you know it is raining or this is a duster or this is a chalk piece etc all these things are represented by some kind of propositional variables and he makes use of only two logical constants that is negation which is a monadic operator it operates on only one particular kind of proposition and the next one is a dyadic operator he chooses one monadic operator and one dyadic operator it operates on two propositions it requires at least two propositions so disjunction is the one which he has chosen and the other brackets are for him like colon and semicolon etc and all are two colons following each other so this stands for some kind of brackets which which is very important for punctuation and these are the formation rules uh, not any, any kind of well formed formula cannot be any kind of formula which you generate uh, is not a well formed formula so the formation rules are like this a propositional variable standing alone if you write just p q r etc and all simple propositional variable that itself is a formula or suppose if x is a well formed formula not x is obviously is going to be a well formed formula 
but uh, this is the formation rules and all. Suppose if x is a well formed formula and then obviously not x is also well formed formula. Suppose you, you, you are not supposed to write like this x following uh, negation and all this is not a well formed formula. So this is the first thing very simple kind of rules which we have discussed when we have introduced the language of propositional logic in the same way uh, first we need to define uh, our language that is a syntax. So now suppose if x is a well formed formula and y is also a well formed formula then he makes use of only one particular kind of logical constraint that is the disjunction so x r not y is also a well formed formula. So since he has used only negation and disjunction no other formula such as all the other things can be defined with the help of negation and disjunction by using material implication. So these are the only three formation rules none of the formula is a well formed formula if it does it does not follow one of these three rules you can add fourth rule which states that you need to follow these three rules meticulously. So now any axiomatic system should have to begin with axioms followed by that uh, you need to have some kind of transformation and substitution rules and third one is as minimal uh, rules of inference uh, will are going to be present in an axiomatic system in this case we use only uh, material implication all the other rules will come as an outcome of these uh, axioms etc and all it is like a capsule and then we are trying to derive everything from a particular kind of thing so everything is hidden in this particular kind of capsule which consists of five axioms. So now the first one is pretty obvious and all so that is we start with tautologies and you will end with tautologies there is no way in which you will get if you start from tautologies that means always a tautology in the propositional logic is considered to be a statement which is always under all possible interpretations. So you start with the tautology and you will you will transform it into some other thing it is going to be a tautology only if you use uniform substitution or truth preserving rules etc on that you will generate only tautologies from tautologies you will generate tautologies only there is no way in which you will get contradiction. So that is the first statement anything for implied by a true elementary proposition is obviously it has to be true so that is a primitive kind of post, uh, postulate he calls. So now these are the five axioms with which you can talk about entire arithmetic you know, all the statements of arithmetic true statements of arithmetic or valid formulas of arithmetic will find proofs by using only one of this uh, any one of these theorems or maybe more also. So the first uh, principle says that uh, it's, uh, every axiom has his name and all it says the law of tot, uh, axiom related to tautology P or P it is raining or it is not it is raining leads to it is raining it does not you are not saying anything great about this one. So now the addition if you have Q you can say if that is already true you can add another P to it without disturbing the truth value of that one. So now you have to note that here implication is somehow serving as a kind of deduction here but later it was questioned by C. I. Lewis in his work survey of symbolic logic he questions this particular kind of thing whether or not material implication would serve as what Russell and White had thought the thought of as deduction deduction according to C. I. Lewis the later works you will find it that so this is somewhat different from the material implication and all so in that context C. I. Lewis has come up with another kind of implication which he calls it as strict implication and that strict implication has led to modal logics etc and all. So early that led to non classical logic that is not what we are trying, trying to talk about. So this Principia Mathematica has I mean served as a starting point for many other kinds of non classical logics etc. So but how did this Principia Mathematica has come into existence there were some problems with related to Frege's axiomatic system because Frege's axiomatic system is based on set theory and set theory is plagued by paradoxes such as we need to talk about that particular kind of paradox that is Russell's paradox. So in order to avoid or avoid this particular kind of paradoxes Russell invited has come up with a grand axiomatic system 
so which is uh, which you find it in the Principia Mathematica it is it is considered to be a grand kind of program uh, which tries to reduce mathematics that means arithmetic to logic. So now all the arithmetic statements can be translated into one of these axioms etc and all and from that you will generate lots of theorems that reflects one of the statements two statements of arithmetic this P skews etc stands for truths of arithmetic or if you are uh, if you are not happy with this particular kind of thing uh, if you are uh, interested in analyzing the simple switch switching digital circuits this P skews etc uh, you mean some kind of switching circuits and all so when I represent uh, suppose if I can represent P means P is closed the switch is closed or not P means P is switch is open it is in that sense one can and can you this particular kinds of theorems particular kind of uh, formulas and all so permutation is uh, like this it is like some kind of commutative property P R Q implies Q R P association P R Q R R implies uh, Q R P R R and the summation rule which was uh, later questioned by a famous uh, logician Paul Bernays and he showed that uh, this axiom can come as an outcome of uh, one of these four axioms which you have stated that is from 2 to 5 using one of these uh, things one can deduce the sixth one that is the, the summation axiom so it is in that context uh, later in the later works of Russell Whitehead axiomatic system you will not find this particular kind of axiom because it will uh, anything which is uh, deduced from some other kind of axiom which will lose its axiom status and all so it will no longer serve as an axiom so these are some of the simple axioms but uh, you must you note that coming up with these axioms is the most difficult part and all so one of the important characteristics of these axioms is, is that whatever you substitute for p q etc and all uniformly you will generate only tautologies because that is obviously a tautology and if you all tautologies with the uniform substitution or transformation will lead to tautologies only. it is a machine that generates tautologies so that is the reason why logicians are always uh, interested in tautologies in the sense that all tautologies are considered to be valid formulas and uh, all valid formulas are obviously uh, have to have a proof so these are some of the five axioms and all these are some of the important transformation rules so now in what way this axiomatic system is different from the ones which we have presented uh, earlier that is a natural deduction etc and all in the natural deduction system just like when you are playing uh, some kind of game you need to know you need to familiarize yourself with all the rules of the game and all just like that in the natural deduction we are, we are familiarized ourselves with uh, all the rules etc and all like there are truth preserving rules etc and these truth preserving rules are added to some of the hypotheses and assumptions which are also assumed to be true and then we have generated various kinds of truths so that is what we have done in the case of natural deduction so here we use as many minimal number of rules as possible obviously one or two at most and then mostly you will use as many less number of axioms and then rest of the things are all derived from of course one important rule that we use is the rule of detachment so now what we mean by rule of substitution suppose if x uh, I will be using a word thesis this is in a sense that uh, it can be a theorem or it can be an axiom an axiom is a self evident kind of truth a theorem is one which is generated out of uh, transforming this uh, axiom into uh, some other kind of state by substitution you, you might one axiom might lead to another kind of proposition so that might lead to theorem if x is a thesis thesis can be considered as uh, a theorem or even axiom so in that sense we have some kind of flexibility in using this phrase that is thesis means it can be either axiom or it can be even theorem if there is only one line for example in this case uh, let us say consider 2 P R P implies P so that does not need any proof and all because it is already an axiom and all so the proof of that one is simply the same statement you reiterate the same thing P R P implies P it is already an axiom axiom does not require any proofs so it is in that, in that sense P R P implies P can be called as a thesis in that particular kind of sense it can be called as an axiom it can be called as a theorem 
So, if x is a thesis in that sense containing propositional variables p1 to pn and y1 to yn is considered to be a well formed formula there are well formed formulas then how did we get this x x is obtained from substituting y1 with p1 and y2 with p2 and yn, yn with pn then you will generate some kind of statement that statement is also considered to be a thesis this means is already a theorem or it should be an axiom so it is like uh, this uh, particular kind of thing so this essentially says that for example if you take into consideration one particular kind of axiom here p r q r q r p uh, this is uh, what is uh, in russell whitehead axiomatic system as permutation so now this is the formula that we have so now we can substitute uh, p implies p for p wherever p is there let us say you can substitute p implies p uniformly you need to substitute and then you substitute not q for q so this can be this should be read as not q is substituted for q that means uniformly you are substituting into this particular kind of axiom then the resulting statement uh, that means this is what is uniform substitution rule so now this will become p implies p or q means not uh, q this is the first statement implies now q means uh, you have to substitute not q or p means this one p implies p now so this is a, this is this is what we got by substituting this thing uniformly so now if you substitute in this way uniformly then the resultant statement will obviously become true so one can check it with the help of any methods that we have learned so far so let us consider this as x so so now if we use semantic tableaux method for this not x is this one so you put negation behind this and then see whether negation of this formula leads to branch closure or not so what essentially we are trying to show is is that in a given axiom whatever you substitute uniformly and the resultant statement is also considered to be a theorem that means it has to be a valid formula so how can we show that this whole formula is a valid formula you deny this for problem deny this formula and then you try to construct a tree and if all the branches closes that means not of x is unsatisfiable that means x has to be valid so now this will become p implies p or not q and then not of not q or p implies p so now this uh, this you will get q not not q is q negation of disjunction is conjunction and then negation of p implies p so now negation of p implies p is nothing but p and not p so this can be written as q followed by that not of p plus p since you have p and not p this branch closes and you don't have to worry much about the above state so what essentially we showed is simply this that when you substitute anything uniformly for q anything uniformly for p it will retain its tautology hood so that is what we mean by uniform substitution so if you can substitute some complex kind of thing into this one but still it will uh, turn out to be a theorem for example let us say uh, p uh, you substituted p r p p r q r r for p and then let us say not p implies q not p implies r for q so if you uniform sub uniformly substitute with any kind of proposition then the resultant formula uh, is also going to be a theorem but you need to ensure that the substitution should be uniform for example if you substitute uh, p or q here and then you substituted not q or p and all this is not a uniform substitution because for q you have substituted q here only but here you have changed and you have used not q then you yourself will see that this is not going to be a tautology and that means it is not going to be a theorem so our substitution has to be uniform so then only your axiom will turn to 
another thing which is considered to be true. So that is what we mean by rule of substitution and the second rule is a simple rule uh, which is uh, called as a modus ponens rule uh, or it can also be called as rule of detachment etc. If x and x implies y are theses they are already assumed to be true or at least theses is then then y the resultant one uh, is also called as a thesis that is also considered to be true. So these are the minimal transformation rule one requires. So now in any axiomatic system we need to have some kind of definitions. So since Russell and Whitehead has used only disjunction and negation so now we need to talk about other important connectives that is implication by implication and conjunction and uh, since he has used only negation and disjunction all the other things should come as an outcome of that one. how do you come up with uh, this particular kind of definition. So he made use of uh, the concept of material implication so uh, implication is defined in this sense x implies y means by definition it is not x or y or you can even write it in the form of a conjunction that is it is not the case that x and not y. So now the conjunction is written in this sense. So using some kind of De Morgan's laws which are already there available to us x and y is equivalent to it is not the case of not x or not y if you transform the same thing it will become x and y. So now conjunction is defined in the sense of disjunction by using only negation and disjunction the one which is there on the right hand side you will find only negation and disjunction. So now x if and only if y is the same as x implies y and y implies x where x implies y is defined as the first one that is not x or y. So these are the definitions that uh, are already there and uh, according to Russell and Whitehead this is uh, one of the important quotations uh, which he has used it in, uh, in the book principles of mathematical philosophy page number 149. So the axioms that we have presented here uh, the five axioms are considered to be the formal principles of deduction employed in the Principia Mathematica. A formal principle of deduction has kind of double rule what is the double rule it has the use of premises of an inference and use as establishing the fact that this premises leads to some kind of conclusion. In the schema of inference that means one proposition is transformed to another proposition we have a proposition P and a proposition P implies Q and from these two you will generate Q that means you are already using the material implication. So now when we are concerned with the principle of deduction our apparatus of primitive propositions has to yield both P and P implies Q as our inferences. So now what you are going to see in the proofs that follows from now is this that when you are moving from one proposition to another proposition somehow in some stage you need to have a proposition is in the form of P and another proposition in the is in the form of P plus Q that allows us to infer Q by using the definition of material implication or the rule of detachment. So that is to say that our rules of deduction are to be used not only as rules which is their use in establishing P plus Q but also as substantive premises that is as P of our particular kind of scheme. So this is what he tells us in this book Principia Mathematica. So what essentially he says is, is that so a proof is considered to be uh, finite sequence of uh, steps etc and all uh, 3 etc. So now you have reduced uh, uh, y from this one let us say so now that means x1 implies y and now you have deduced this thing x1 implies y and all so now from 1 and 4 there is a way in which you can move to x1 detaches and then you will generate y. So these are all considered to be premises etc and all in addition to that uh, we can generate some kind of statements like this by using the material implication I mean by using the definition of material implication as well as rule of detachment. So this is what is the rule of detachment. So now what is that Betton Russell and Whitehead are trying to show. 
So, now you have formulated an axiomatic system which consists of disjunction and negation and we have some set of axioms and then we also know that a true statement will lead to true statement only that is the first kind of proposition he is talking about and then we have transformation rules which preserves the tautologiness of your axioms if your axioms are trimmed in such a way that that the fine trimming will lead to only tautologies only so now we are in, we ensured ourselves that in what way we can generate tautologies so now all the varied formulas which you can think of should come as a theorem of theorem by using only these rules and all only only by using these rules and the axioms that i have given so now here is one of the examples which is i have produced it as it is which is used in the context of principia mathematica but we use a different kind of notation so star means in chapter 1 is a second kind of preposition or something like that so now that single turnstile followed by colon i mean that should be written as prp the whole thing in brackets prp in place p so now this you will obtain it with the help of three steps so now how do you generate this particular kind of thing so we have we need to generate this prp in place p so now these are some of the axioms that we have so now let us say that you are generating p in place pr p so now this is what is the axiom 1 so that is prp in place p I mean we are uh, what we, what essentially I am trying to say is, is that this is the notation which is used by Bertrand Russell and Whitehead it is not a theorem of uh, anything it is considered to be an axiom axiom 1 is this one. So this can be obtained in our modern notation as follows so first we will eliminate this uh, colon and we will put some kind of uh, square bracket and then this will become PRP and you will uh, use the dot symbol uh, dot there and then we do not disturb this dot and all. So now in the second step we are assuming we are assuming that dot means this the brackets so now PRP is in brackets and then P is also in brackets and then we are removing the excessive kind of brackets and all unnecessary kind of things and all the outer brackets we removed but still we can retain the same thing even in the second statement P in brackets does not make any big difference and all it's same as P1 so now the formula becomes PRP implies P. So like this uh, when you are trying to translate the ones uh, which you are uh, which you see in the Principia Mathematica into our modern notation some steps are involved in it so first you need to uh, you can eliminate this uh, colons etc and all and then put it into the brackets and etc and all this will become our modern notation so but Russell has used uh, as in the uh, heading that is uh, a single turn style followed by that colon PRP and dot. I mean see you have to stop there you have to give a pause there and this symbol horseshoe is the one which he has used but we are using uh, the straight arrow in particular. So Bertrand Russell has used this one and then this means some kind of uh, square brackets and then dot means a kind of uh, bracket for example a dot is before this one means the left bracket a dot after this thing the right hand side is considered to be a right bracket and all so like this we have used and then we have translated into some kind of convenient kind of notation so now what we will be doing from now is simply this that any axiomatic system uh, that you are trying to talk about um, we have three laws of logic that is law of identity p implies p and law of excluded middle that is p or not p and law of non contradiction it is not the case that p and not p at the same time so now at least these three laws of logic should come as an outcome of course there are many uh, it is also expected that all the valid formulas should find a proof and all but the bare minimum is, is that at least these three things should come as an outcome you formulated a grand formal axiomatic system and you should now you need to ensure that at least these three laws of logic will come as an outcome because all the other things are constructions of these three fundamental laws of logic. So now uh, let us uh, try to prove uh, some uh, kind of theorems so that is uh, like uh, P implies P etc. 
So now uh, let us uh, try to prove uh, this particular kind of thing which is considered to be kind of uh, transitive property so that is Q implies R implies P implies Q and P implies R. So now how do you prove this particular kind of thing so now we need to use only the axioms that, uh, that are listed there that is the five axioms that we have and you have to use transformation rules and you need to use only modus ponens rule and ultimately that uh, proposition which is up appearing in the blue color uh, the first one Q implies R and P implies Q and P implies R. So you are trimming these axioms in such a way that it will lead us to this particular kind of theorem that is Q implies R implies P implies Q and P implies R. So now in these cases uh, you must note that uh, uh, what kind of axiom that you will be choosing I mean that depends upon our uh, kind of some kind of creativity in choosing these axioms you might choose any one of these axioms but uh, if you take some selective kind of axioms and all then your proof might be uh, consisting of less number of steps. So that depends upon only our creativity etc. So in a way uh, uh, it is uh, Proving some kind of the uh, proving theorems is also kind of an art, just like programming is a kind of art. So this uh, proving these theorems is also considered to be kind of art because uh, in somebody's proof it will have only four steps, or in someone might struggle and then you will come up with a 15-page proof. You know. So you might ask, what is that uh, we will be getting from these things? Uh, is because uh, so in the the reason why we are meticulously working on these proofs is because of this particular kind of thing that is in the Euclidean geometry this is also considered to be an axiomatic system. So there are many things which are not part of the proof or also outside the proof are also taking part in the proof. So that we should avoid it all if you if a proof has to be rigorous then everything needs to be stated explicitly that is what we mean by axioms. And then from the axioms we transform it in by using transformation rules and modus ponens etc and we will transform it into some other thing. So now how do we prove Q implies R implies P implies Q and P implies R. So now to start with we used axiom number 5 so that is this one Q implies R implies P R Q implies P R R. So this is what we have began with so let us consider prove this particular kind of thing by using this thing. this is what we are trying to prove Q implies R implies P implies Q plus P implies this is one second Q implies R is that we are trying to prove uh, Q plus R means P plus Q plus P plus R. So this is what we are trying to prove. So now you you have began with this axiom number five. So that is uh, P R Q implies uh, is that axiom uh, P R R. So now you begin with this particular kind of axiom so now it appears to be more or less somehow you need to change these things in such a way this axiom needs to be trimmed in such a way so that you will generate this particular kind of thing. So now there are many ways which you can think of so that this will transform to a particular kind of thing for example what kind of substitution one need to make so that you transform these things into this particular kind of thing. Q plus R is same as this one and then some kind of substitutions you need to make so that it will be this thing. So now in axiom number 5 suppose if you substitute not P for P that means wherever P occurs you substitute it with not P then what will happen axiom 5 is transformed into this thing Q implies R implies so now P will become not P or Q and this will become not P R. So now uh, this one let us say this is 1 and 2 and 3 2 you have to use definition here what is the definition that you will be using so P implies Q is nothing but 
by definition not p or q. So, now wherever not p or q this means this thing q implies r implies this means this one. So, now the justification of this one is this that this by definition is nothing but this one p implies q. So, you need to put a bracket here. So, now not p or r implies p implies r. So, this is what we are trying to generate. So, now in this proof you have only two steps with one substitution you can transform this axiom you are trimming this axiom into another kind of thing statement which is usually considered as theorem. So, why it is called as a theorem each step of your proof is considered to be true then obviously the final step of your proof is what we mean by a theorem that is what we have defined earlier in the beginning of this axiomatic systems when we are talking about axiomatic system the last step of your proof is considered to a theorem. So, this is the way to prove this particular kind of uh, proposition. So, there are other theorems which we can take up and we can prove uh, uh, these things in this way. So, let us say you are trying to prove this particular kind of thing P implies Q implies R implies Q implies P implies R. So, now for this again you need to think in a certain way what kind of axiom which you can use so that you can come closer to this particular kind of theorem. If not in one step at least by transforming into some other kind of steps using transformation rules and modus ponens etc. So, now you started with axiom number 4 that is law of association in this case you started with P R Q R R implies Q R P R R. So, now in this axiom 4 you have substituted q for not q wherever q is there not q and so then this will become this is what we have done in the second step that is what you find it here not p for p and wherever you find q you substituted with not q. So, then this association kind of principle you will get this thing. So, now let us consider this thing p plus q r r implies q r p r r. So, this is what is called as axiom 4 and this is also called as association. So, now what you have done here is this that wherever p is there you are substituted with not p uh, p and wherever q is there you are substituted with not q in a 4. So, now this will become uh, not p r uh, not q r, r implies this is q means not q r not p r. You put it in the square bracket so that you will avoid the confusion. So, now so this by definition uh, is this thing in the second step we will write it q implies r. So, now again this by definition you will get p implies r. So, now again you invoke definition on this one. So, this is not x or y that means it is x implies y where x is here p uh, not p uh, x is p and then y is q implies r. So, that means it is P implies Q implies R implies Q implies P implies R. So, this is the way to prove this particular kind of theorem. So, now one might ask many questions here. So, how do we generate an effective kind of proof? So, now it depends upon what kind of axiom that you are going to take into consideration. So, in principle you can take any axiom into consideration and then you can generate proof for this one, but if I had chosen the A4 axiom then my proof would be simpler and I can generate a proof in two steps. In the same way you can generate proof in even 6 or 7 steps also by using maybe you can start with A1 and ultimately if it did not it will not work out and then you move to some other axiom and then work in such a way that somehow the or trimming this axioms in such a way that you will generate 
whatever is considered to be a theorem. So in this lecture what we have done is that we have presented Petron Russell and Whitehead axiomatic system and then we have seen that any axiomatic system should consist of a set of axioms transformation rules and the rule of inference in the case of Principia Mathematica you will find only disjunction and negation as primitive symbols and then transformation rules and the rule of detachment and uh, uh, making use of these things uh, definition of material implication that is A plus B is nothing but not A or B. Uh, I mean, you could you could talk about uh, uh, all the other connectives based on these two primitive connectives by using the definitions. So now we have seen some simple kind of proofs uh, in which uh, we have transformed the given axiom. We started with an axiom, and then we applied some kind of transformation rules. That means, uh, in a way, we have used uh, uniform substitution, etc. And then we trimmed these axioms in such a way that we generated whatever we decide to prove. So in the next class we will be talking about some more proofs in Principia Mathematica uh, like uh, at least uh, this uh, law of identity, law of excluded middle etc. And then we are going to see whether or not this Principia Mathematica is going to be consistent or it, uh, whether, whether this system formal axiomatic system is going to be complete etc. Other things which we will be talking about in the next class.